What it do you guys, I am back with another video and in today's video we got a little installation for you guys. Today I'm going to be installing my springs and my spacers on my 2023 manual soup, alright. We got to fix this nasty wheel gap, alright. Look at that. I can fit about like three fingers in the front and about almost like three and a half in the back all right we're gonna get this i think it's about to get to about like maybe two fingers i think that's what's about to be in the back and about to be in the front we got the h and r springs we got the i think i'm lowering about three quarters of an inch in the front and an inch in the back or vice versa one of the two and then we got 13 millimeter spacers for the front wheels and 15 millimeter spacers for the back wheels just to give that you know that wider stance out here you know just make it a little more flush because that's pretty nasty you know what i'm trying to say get rid of that wheel gap make the fence make the wheel even with the fender a little bit and the same thing in the back i'm about to just jack the car up and get it started so let's go just a little disclaimer before i get this started i am not a mechanic this is not a tutorial this is just you know me just doing it myself a little daily vlog of me trying to get the springs and spaces on my car so if you were trying to look at this video for inspiration and how to do it this is not the video for that. This is just me trying to show y'all me putting it on my car, all right? So don't look at this video as a tutorial, all right? Let's just get that plain and simple. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is the first thing I did was actually I put the the wheels on some wood so you know, level it up a little bit so I can get the jack underneath and out safely without any problems after the fact. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of big brain thinking to get this done. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, instead, I have spring compressors just in case. I bought some spring compressors just in case. I'm trying my best not to use them if I don't have to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the weight of the car decompress the springs itself pretty much. So what I'm gonna about to do is I'm about to just zap this bolt. Well, I'm about to just undo this bolt right here, which is what holds the spring together. And then I'm slowly gonna raise the car up so that the spring just kind of like decompresses itself with the weight of the car so I don't have to put the spring compressors on. So that's step one. I'm gonna jack the car up after I zap that bolt done to let the spring just kind of like slowly let off as I raise the car up so there's no like spring bouncing around my crib, you know? So let's get it done. Nice. So we took that lid off and slowly let the car down to let the spring decompress. How's the height looking? off the ground yep man let me tell you this shit is not easy all right i thought it was gonna be easy i thought it was gonna be a breeze in the park but it is not all right it took me like two and a half hours even probably even more because what happened was for some reason the end link bar in the back that you got to take off i'll show you guys on the other side when i get the chance but the end link bar was like in there awkwardly because i i guess i just i don't know i did something wrong the first couple steps so the end link bar was Maneuvered sideways, but we finally figured out we got the old sprint. We got the new spring on the old spring off and we're about to Pretty much patch her back up. Oh shit, man. I'm telling you that was not fun. That was not easy But hey, man, we're on to the next <laughs> All right, so what I did the first time was not the move don't suggest it don't suggest zapping the top bolt to let the car decompress the spring itself Don't suggest at all. All right, so what I do suggest is putting the spring compressors on. I learned the hard way. So what I did was I took the wheel off. I jacked up. I jacked it up right underneath the wheel, um, the hub of the wheel right there. Just so like can let the spring like compress itself with the spring compressors on. Um, I already took off all the sensors. So what I'm about to do now is undo this end link bar right here. This nut right here. I'm about to undo that which you just let the whole thing be able to slide forward like how you saw in the last clip how the literally the suspension was like outside the car so i'm about to undo that zap the top bolt and then the whole thing should literally just fall down and then i'll be able to lean it forward like how you guys saw before and then take it all out get spring compressors <laughs> i do not suggest letting the car's weight decompress the spring itself it gets confusing and messes it up it might it might make things uneven if you don't do proper like how I did the first time it took me literally four hours don't suggest that do it like this get spring compressors easiest way to do it all right finally got the second one out it's looking good everything's taken out already 
This one was a lot faster than the other one. Hey man, like I said, if you guys have spring compressors, use them. Don't try not to you not use them. But second one's out, but I put the second one in. And honestly, this literally took all day, so I'm gonna do the backs tomorrow to just give myself a little break. This shit was hard and tiring. For y'all, that would be nothing but for me. I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. So I do kind of need two hands to do this, but the second one's going on right now. The bump stops right there. You just slap that right on top of it again. And then we just kind of just push it back in and reassemble it all. Shouldn't be that difficult. All right, the second one's finally in place. She's looking like a beaut. That boy made in Germany. No, y'all can see that. All right, cool. So it's already lined up in there. You guys got to make sure that it's like perfectly lined up at the top and that this right here is also... That this right here is also lined up like with the little bump stop right here. You should see it like right in there. So yeah, we just got to put the spacer on. Spacer is some easy work. We already did on the other side. Uh, yeah, we got to put the swing arm back through. And uh, that's wraps. We did the first step. We did the first. We did the front. And tomorrow I will start the back. All right, what is up? It is a completely different day. I am now starting on the rear springs of the car. Stormy's all jacked up nice and easy. You know, we got the jack stand underneath there. Got the stand set left and right. And we finally just got off the rear spring. It wasn't too hard as compared to the front. The fronts were way more difficult than the rears. So it wasn't that difficult. I'll show you guys more on the other side. But these two bolts right here are a pain in the ass. These two bolts right here, pain in the ass, all right? That shit took forever to get off. It literally took me damn near, shit, probably a whole week to get them off. <laughs> but hey man, we're finally back at it. So let's get it going. All right, so we finally got the rear spring on. What was really a pain in the ass was this right here. These two bolts are impossible to get on and off. You gotta make sure you guys level them right because if you don't level it right, then it's not gonna sit properly and then you're fucked. So honestly, it wasn't that difficult to get the rear springs in. The rear springs are way easier than the front, but it's just these two bolts, man. Once you get these two bolts loose, this whole thing swings down. You're able to just pull the spring right out. And it's honestly as simple as that. Just those two bolts are a bitch. All right, same thing on the other side. Those two bolts are real hard to get off. The only difference between the driver's side and the passenger side is that you have this little sensor that's kind of difficult to get off. On other models, it's just a clip. But on the 2023, it's a 10 millimeter bolt that you gotta like hold still. I'm trying to get that best angle for you guys. But the 21, it's a 10 millimeter, sorry. You gotta hold still on both sides. And then, like, if you don't hold the other one still, it'll rotate still. So you gotta, you gotta hold them both and rotate them both and it'll, just undo that sensor and you'll be good to go. And that's the only difference between the driver's side and the passenger side. Other than that, hey man, we did it. Second spring's on. We got both springs on. I'm gonna lower the car washer and that's reps. All right, so we finally finished putting the rear springs in the car. And when I mean she is complete, she is what she is. And she's looking good. That's the front and that's the rears. Look at that. Look at that, you should have seen that wheel gap before. I was dead ass riding around with some uneven suspension with the front springs in, not the rear springs put in, for like almost a whole week, because it took me a whole week to figure out how to get that bolt out. But we finally did it, and she's good. Look at her. She's looking good, man. Come on, man, that's a good ass wheel gap. And the spaces are on her too, so she's looking wider than normal. Hey man, we did our job. We did what we had to do. All right, quick little recap. All right, the front springs were very difficult to do. I'm not gonna lie. I suggest using spring compressors. I don't suggest uh, doing what I did, being big brain thinking and trying to let the weight of the car decompress the springs, not the move. If you have a proper lift, if you wanna try it, go for it. But I suggest using spring compressors if you guys have them. And then the rear springs, it wasn't completely difficult. It was just those two bolts that you got to get off and they're tight and they're damn near impossible to get off. They're really stubborn. It's annoying as fuck. But once you get those two bolts off, it's pretty simple. You literally just move the arm down. You pull the spring out. You put a new spring in. Make sure it's lined up and like you're good to go. Fronts was a whole different story. Unfortunately, I didn't get a before video of what she looked like. But if you guys want to see pictures and other stuff of my car, check out my Instagram. I'll leave the description. I'll leave the link in the description below. And make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe so I can post more content that keeps me motivated and lets me know if you guys want to see more content. All right, and we out. Peace.